Today we're going to talk about the 2020 SEO formula for roofing contractors. SEO is an ever-evolving thing. Google's always making updates to its algorithm to, to really provide the user, the searcher, with the best experience. So that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. And, uh, and in that, we will, uh, you know, we'll start off, you know, this is part of our digital dominance blueprint. We have an ongoing series throughout the year. These webinars happen on a monthly basis. Things got a little, uh, a little, little changed around during the last two months. Uh, we did a special webinar on, on, on the COVID crisis. If you, if you, you can check out our YouTube channel for the replay there or go to our website. I think you can find it there also. Um, and so, but now we're back on track. <clears throat> we're back on track and we want to get back everyone back on track. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. I see things opening up. The hail is falling, right? So this is, you know, people, we're, we're back to work. So, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, we're doing webinars like this around SEO, uh, uh, pay-per-click advertising, your Google My Business listing, optimizing your website for conversions, all types of things all throughout the, the year. So if you, uh, you know, keep, Keep following us, keep tuning in, and we'll, we'll keep adding pieces to, to the puzzle for you. Um, you, know, during, you know, during this time, we got about an hour, so I'd like to ask you guys to, to turn off your cell phones, turn off Facebook. You know, if you're a roofing business owner, you know, what we talk about today can really make it a serious impact in your business. So if you could really give us you know, some, you know, your, your best attention during this time, we'd really appreciate it. I know I have tabs open everywhere. I just had to set the do not disturb on the, on the cell phone. And, um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, the more attention you pay now, the, you know, the better you're going to get, uh, you know, what the things you're going to get out of it. Um, so we're going to cover today are some of the latest updates with the Google, Google algorithm. We're also going to cover the things that, uh, that, that, may, uh, that you have to put in place uh, that you have put in place in the past that could be hurting you, right? So some, some bad link building efforts, things like that, that could be hurting you now. And how to optimize uh, your website using this new strategy. So, you know, why, who are we and why, why should you listen to us? You know, my, my business partner, Brian, and I are the co-authors of the book, Internet Marketing for Roofing Contractors, How to Triple Your Sales and Turn Your Website into an Online Lead Generation Machine. Members of the NRCA, you know, we're widely accepted as premier experts in internet marketing for, for the roofing business. We, we get called on to do presentations, uh, you know, through industry-wide and, and work with some of the larger manufacturers and, and, and some of the companies to, to provide this type of education uh, to, to, to the roofing industry. We work with roofing businesses across the U.S. I'm also the host of the Roofing Success Podcast. If you haven't if you haven't checked that out yet, it's on all streaming platforms and on YouTube. Um, check out the Roofing Success Podcast, where I interview successful roofing contractors and then some coaches and, and consultants to the roofing industry. And, uh, you know, we, we only work with roofing businesses, with roofing business owners. So this is what we do day in and day out. Our team is is doing SEO for roofing contractors on a day-to-day -day basis, not for any other type of companies. We don't work with attorneys. We don't work with, you know, anything other than roofing contractors. We're doing pay-per-click for roofing contractors on a day-to-day -day basis, Facebook marketing. We're doing all these things for biz roofing business owners on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, you know, this is what we do. Uh, my little sales pitch here, if you, you know, if you do, you know, as we're going through this, if you're like, man, I really would like someone to implement this for me, throw Nikki a, a message in chat and say, hey, you know, let's, let's schedule a time to call. It's the last time I'll talk about that. But, you know, today I want to talk about, you know, we're really going to talk about does SEO still matter, right? We're, I want to start off with that question. Uh, who in the chat, throw, throw a one in the chat if you think SEO still matters. Throw a two in the chat if you think SEO doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, we got some ones, got some ones for sure. And, and so you guys are of the mindset. You, you're of the, the correct mindset, right? Where, you know, SEO does matter right? SEO really matters in today's, in today's search climate. 
you know, I always talk about that there are five ways to five places on the Google search engine results page to generate a lead for your roofing business. Starting at the top with the Google local service ads, then the pay-per-click advertising, your Google maps listing, which is organic, right? There's SEO involved in that. And then down into the website section where, where that, that is your traditional organic SEO. And so in that, uh, you know, in that, in that, in that organic SEO, in, in SEO, we, we talk about your, it, it really is your, your, a combination of your Google My Business listing and your website. And there's a strong correlation between the two. And about 73% of the clicks that, get, that happen on the page happen in these two sections, right? And, and so SEO really matters. 67% of all of the interactions on the page happen with the top three in the map pack and the top two in the organic listings. So, you know, getting to these positions can be a game changer for your business, right? A true game changer. So, of course, yes, the, you know, it's a loaded question, but SEO still matters for sure, for sure. So, you know, just looking at one of our clients here, um, I think this is this year so far, you can see that, uh, you know, that, that they had uh, uh, 127 calls from Google Organic, uh, 89 from their Google My Business listing. So that's from the organic calls right there. 75% of their calls so far this year have come from organic search. And now, you know, we're heading into roofing season. This is a company in, in, in you know, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So you know, going into the summer months, they're going to put some more ad, you know, more budgets into their ad spends and things like that. But the organic traffic will still track as, as their highest, um, as the higher, uh, higher number of calls. And so you, you really just can't rely on paid advertising, right? You, it, it, you have to have an overall plan and, and, and do this in conjunction with each other. So let's talk about the three biggest changes first. Three biggest changes in SEO, uh, really it's that detailed and well-written content matters. Google is really all about the, uh, the user experience, right? And, and displaying search results that relate as well as possible to what the user typed in. So very detailed, well-written content is how you get there. Low quality and spammy backlinks pointed to your website will crush your rankings. And not just low quality backlinks, but the type of anchor text that is in that backlink. So if the backlinks have spammy anchor text, I'll talk about that also. If the backlinks have spammy anchor text, that's also an issue. So we, we could talk about how to get rid of those. And then uh, needing a real physical office in your city is, is essential to rank well, right? And, you know, the days of being able to go and get UPS boxes all, all over the place, it just doesn't work anymore. Um, Google is really cracking down on Google My Business listings and, and, and how, how well they're, uh, they're, uh, they're able to rank. So, the fourth thing and what, you know, one of the biggest changes over the year is, is Google's attention to site speed and how site speed matters. Very extremely, uh, what, uh, it's an, an integral part of your SEO efforts. So starting with detail and well-written content, right? Um, I like to say that Google only knows how to read. That's kind of my way of describing it. Google only knows how to read. So if you don't have the words on your page, on your page or pages to describe your services and service area in detail, you're really missing out on a big opportunity. Um, the more words you can tell Google, the more, the more Google can correlate your website into what it ranks for. So every service you offer should have its own page of well-written, informative, detailed content. And as when we go into some live examples a little, in a little bit, we'll, we'll go through that. Uh, most roofing companies service, you know, a 20, 25, 50 mile radius. 
So you should have pages targeting each of these cities, all of the cities and areas in that service area, right? Because, and, but, but you have to make them unique. You can't just copy paste all of the, and just change the city name on all of it. So you still have to, you have to have a little bit more unique content on each of these things. And well-written copy matters. You want to you wanna sell your visitors on your services and make sure that they don't leave without contacting you, right? You want to have a high conversion rate on that traffic. There's a fine line between doing search engine optimization and, and making it uh, really difficult for the user to read, right? So we want to make sure that, we're, that, that well, you have well-written copy on this. The next thing is too many irrelevant or low quality links pointing back to your site. These can actually hurt you. So maybe you hired an SEO company, you know, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago that went out and did things that, that worked back then, right? They built all kinds of backlinks to your website. And that was something that worked, you know, five years ago. But now you may be being penalized for those backlinks if, if you haven't uh, cleaned them up. So, you know, it, it used to be all about links. The Penguin update addressed that. Um, so you're going to have to review your link profile and, and find these bad links and either have them review, uh, removed from the website that they're on or what we refer to as disavowed. So there's a file that you can put on your website that uh, in, on your web hosting server that when Google is reading through your site, it says, oh, don't, don't pay attention to that link. We know it's there. We know it's junk. We don't want anything to do with it. So you're, you're formally expressing your, 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 you know, your, your, your dislike for that link, essentially. Um, you want to work to diversify your anchor text. And this is what I was talking about within that, the, that that's beyond just the, the link. It's the anchor text on the link. So the most popular anchor text on the internet is click here, right? So you've seen anchor, you've seen links like this, right? You, you, you're reading through a page and it says, click here and it's underlined and you click it and it goes to the new website. So that's an example of anchor text. Um, if you have spammy anchor text, like roofing contractor city state, um, and you have that for hundreds of backlinks, roofing contractor, city, state, roofing contractor, your city, your state, roofing contractor, your city, your state, Google goes, oh, they're trying to game the system, right? Those guys are trying to game the system. So you have to have a variety in your backlinks and in your anchor text. So you need a real physical office to rank well in Google Maps or organically. Um, the map section has been spammed and spammed and spammed and spammed. So Google is, is really um, trying to, to clean that up. Alex mentions, can you explain that your city company link? So uh, for example, uh, um, uh, if you are in Minneapolis, Minnesota, maybe the, the, instead of saying click here, it says roofing company, Minneapolis, Minnesota, right? And if it, if, it, if it says that too many times, Google knows you're trying to get, trying to rank for roofing company, Minneapolis, Minnesota, right? So in doing that over and over and over again, it actually begins to hurt you. So hopefully that answers your question, Alex. If not, we can, uh, we can go into more detail as, as we go along here. We'll get to a question and answer period where we can go into lots of detail. So, um, so you need a real physical address. Um, back in February, uh, Google, Google's artificial intelligence went across all of the Google My Business listings in the, in the system, and it, it knocked out about 4 million Google My Business listings. Now, it didn't m knock out all the spammy ones. Some real companies, Google My Business listings went down also. And in that process, um, in that process, to get your Google My Business listing back up, you had to re-verify. So if you have a Google My Business listing, you know you, they used to just mail you a postcard. You put in the code and you're good to go. Nowadays, they're gonna ask you to take a picture of the outside of your office. 
Do you have a sign, right? Can you do a video walkthrough of, our, of your office? They're asking higher level um, verification type of processes. They have higher level verification processes in place to fight all of that spam. So having a real, a real office is, is going to help you. Google Maps has a major, that was a major update in, in Pigeon. The primary address on your Google Ma uh, Maps listing um, needs to be that, right? It needs to be your local focused where your, where your actual office is. Uh, the, uh, they, it took a major toll. This, this update took a major toll on, on fake addresses, UPS stores, mailboxes, et cetera, virtual offices. Um, working from home, home offices are, are still, you know, it's still okay, um, but, but it, it's, it's still a little bit more, they get a little bit uh, tricky if you have to re-verify and show, fit, you know, signs and, and, you know, things like that. Um, so you, you really need a, a physical address in the city that you're looking to rank in. Right, so you know, ideally in the ad in the in the exact area where you want to be ranking in, because there's a proximity factor in Google rankings, and with being able to show that address, not just hide it with a with a service area. So now the fourth thing, and what's really kind of prevalent, what what a really prevalent change in recent kind of in recent history is is site speed and how site speed really matters in the ranking of your website. And if you think about it, it's kind of common sense. Google is trying to provide the best user experience. So, you know, I remember dial-up internet, and I remember how long it took to load a web page. And if you don't, you know, if, if you're like me, or if you're not like, like me, you know, I mean, sometimes you'd be sitting there for minutes, right? And uh, just to get, it, get something down, uh, a website to display, and over time, you know, we've gotten better at that. But now, even if it's an extra couple of seconds, if it's over, if your site loads in over three seconds, that's a negative indicator, right? That's how much we're, we're reliant on site speed. And a lot of it is just because Google knows that people don't want to wait. They want to click and see the information that they're looking for. So site speed really matters. A place that you can check your site speed is this uh, Google PageSpeed Index, developers.google.com, uh, PageSpeed Inde Insights. Um, Nikki, maybe you could drop that in the chat. Find this link and drop that in the chat for everyone, and then they can, they can drop their own, uh, uh, post their own uh, sites in there. Actually, we could take a look. We'll, we'll do a couple of them uh, as, as we're going through the uh, live examples. So, so things that you can do to increase your page speed. Uh, the first thing is enabling compression. So compression means that it, it takes all of the images and files and just makes them smaller, right? They're, and then minifying CSS, JavaScript, and H HTML. This is kind of a technical thing, but when, when code is written for websites in the back end, as human beings, we write code in a way that, that, that makes it visually easy for us to visually read which means there's spaces, there's, uh, there's new lines. It's, it looks like a paragraph, right? It looks like a book. But in between paragraphs, there's a space. A computer doesn't need that space. So we have minifying all of your code means to take out all of the empty space between all of the code. Um, and you don't have to do this personally. There, there, there are plugins. If you have a WordPress site, there are plugins that'll do that for you and things like that. Um, so, so, but it's essentially taking out all of the blank space that we need as humans to read something because the computer doesn't, and it can, then it reads it faster. Uh, you want to reduce redirects. So, what, you know, having a secure website these days is very important, <clears throat> but if you're, well, maybe you've noticed on, let, let me do another example. Maybe you've noticed on some sites, they'll say www dot right? And on other sites, there is no www dot. If those, that can be a redirect. So if you type in www.roofingcompany.com, your roofingcompany.com, 
and it redirects to just roofingcompany.com without the www. That's a, that's a slight addition to, uh, it slightly slows down the page load. So you have to reduce all of your redirects. Uh, remove render blocking JavaScript, don't worry about that. Lever, leverage browser caching. So you know Google, Google Chrome will, will save images. So the second time someone visits your website, it will have some of the images and some of the code in their browser so that your site loads faster for them. Um, improve server response time. So that, that's more on the hosting side of things. Don't use GoDaddy for hosting, right? If you have a GoDaddy shared plan for hosting, you're going to have a difficult, difficult time getting your site speed up. So having a quality hosting provider, we like to host all of our sites on a, uh, we, we use, we build all of our sites for our clients on WordPress and we host them all on a, a on a, a, a cert or a hosting platform called WP Engine, which is one of the fastest and most secure uh, hosting platforms for WordPress out there. You use a content distribution network, also referred to as a CDN. Um, this, the, the most kind of prevalent one of these is called Cloudflare. And what this does is it takes all of your files for your website and it puts them all around the world on different servers. So if someone is searching from the West Coast of the United States, they'll get, they'll be served your files from that, from the closest server to them. If they're on the East Coast, it'll be a different, they'll get it from a different server. So it allows that all of this improves your site speed. And then the biggest thing in the, and probably the easiest thing that, that you can do is optimizing your images, right? If you go out and have a full you know, 4K image, you have this beautiful new DSLR camera and you take this beautiful 4K image and then you upload it directly to your website in, full, in its full glory, that's going to slow your website down, right? So you have to resize that website to fit in the area that you're, that you're looking for, uh, for it to fit in. So those are some, some things on, uh, on site, spa site speed. Um, again, SEO taxes from two years ago or, or longer are no longer effective. Um, uh, the new SEO formula approach really has a heavy focus on user experience optimization. That's, that's really, really the, the basis of it. And that's how you want to think about it on a day-to-day -day basis is, you know, when you're, when you're, is how do we serve the user better? And so click-through rate is, is key. So when someone is searching for roofing companies near me, they have a list of all, all the companies that Google feels is most relevant to that search result. The people that get, the more times people click on your, on your website versus someone else's website, that's an indicator to Google that says, hey, this one's the right one, right? This is, people are skipping these three and going down to the fourth one, right? We're gonna, let's move them up in the page because they seem to be the right, the right fit, right? The right correlation. Scroll rate and time on page is essential. Um, we want to know, are they scrolling down once they get to your homepage or website? The more, the more people get to your website and, and scroll down, that's, they're spending more time on your website. And that time on page is a, extremely, it's an extremely important metric to Google because it tells Google that they gave the user what they were looking for, right? The more time someone spends on your website, that's a clear indication to Google. Hey, this is the right, yeah, we gave them the right thing. That's referred to as bounce rate. So the faster someone leaves your page, the higher your bounce rate is. Um, and so that's something that you can watch closely in your uh, Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Branding is huge, right? Google loves brands. Google loves brands because they have, they, they have authority. Right. If uh, if you think of cola, you think of Coke or Pepsi. Right. So it, the, having that branding that uh, uh, helps Google uh, kind of trust your website. Right. Um, a, a local museum or something like that would have, you know, has 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 a lot of authority. Right. So it doesn't 
it, it doesn't need a lot of links. It doesn't need a lot of other things because it has that off, uh, offline authority. Uh, the number of citations, reviews, and relevant links are huge. You have to write, have the right citations. And we'll go into citations a little bit more. You know, getting your review count up, that is a trust factor for Google. The more people who review your Google My Business listing, the more trustworthy your, your brand is, right? And then relevant links. So first, you want to figure out uh, what the most important keywords are based on your service and service area and search volume. You can do this through Google's keyword tool, through Google Ads. You can do it through tools like SEMrush, SpyFu, Google AdWords. Um, there are a lot of other Google like keyword planning tools out there where you can find these things. You need to set up a great website with pages targeting each of those keywords. And we'll talk about that and show you that in our live example. Um, we want to have pages for each service and every city and neighborhood. And I know I've said this a couple of times now, but I want you to really take that in. Really write that down as a point of, of, of something that you need to do as soon as possible if you don't have that content built out on your website. You want to optimize your website for user experience, including site speed. Uh, you want to optimize your site for SEO, which is on-site on on optimization or on-page optimization. And then we build authority through off-site or off-page SEO. Here are, uh, here are some, uh, some, some ideas for roofing keywords. And, and you can go to roofermarketers.com slash roofing dash keywords. And Nikki, if you could drop that one in the chat also. And we'll, that's where we can sh we'll share this list of keywords for you. So, you know, your city plus roofing companies, right? That's a great, that would be something that, that would be great to rank for. Dallas roofing companies, right? Denver roofing companies, Minneapolis roofing companies. Those are very quality keywords to focus on. But also the, the variation of roofing contractors, right? Not just roofing companies, roofing contractors, roofers, roofing services, roofing experts, roof specialists, residential roofing, commercial roofing, asphalt, shingle, um, you know, cedar, metal, flat roofs, roof repair, roof repa replacement, roof installation, all of the ways, the, the, the ways that people type in to Google to find a roofing con contractor to call. Other things that may, you know, to add on to that, right? Recommended roofing contractors, roofing contractors with financing or who finance, um, uh, you know, uh, roofers in my area, roofers near me, best roof experts in my area, right? There's, there's so many combinations of this uh, that you can use and so I'm going to take a, a quick second here and we're going to go into, into things in a little bit greater detail. Drop in the chat something that, 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 we that I talked about here that maybe you learned or you noticed on your website that you need to work on, something that you'd like to share. Um, David asked, would you recommend unique pages of content for all of those keywords? Uh, yes, and to a point, right? So every page on your website should focus on one, one, main, one main keyword. And then you can also uh, have uh, some kind of sub keywords that are relatable to that on the page also that, that you can rank for. Um, but but you definitely need those main one page for every main keyword. So you need a roof, you know, a roof replacement page, right? You need a roof repair page. You need a, a metal roofing page, metal roofing page. You need a, if you do cedar shake, a, you know, cedar, a cedar roofing page, right? So each of those, having those individually is, 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 is because you're trying to rank specifically for that. On the commercial side, having a page for TPO, having a page for modified bitumen, right? All of these things, uh, having a page for residential, having a page for commercial. Uh, Mark, how's it going? 
How important is consistency of design across various pages that you create? Is this more about the experience or does this affect the Google rankings? Yeah, so design is definitely more of a conversion rate optimization tactic, right? A, more of a factor around, uh, around the, the optimization of the, of, the, of the users on the page, not as much for Google rankings. Um, the on-page SEO, which we'll talk about in a second here, is kind of the back-end structure of that when, when you're the, in the design. So you have the design of the, of the pages and, and how you're placing the words on the page, whether, it's, whether the, you know, you're using uh, the certain text in H1 tags, header one tags, header two tags, header three tags. That, I guess, is a design element in itself. But, but the design is more for the conversion rate optimization, the visual stimulation of the user, right? All right. So let's delve into that on-site optimization, on-page optimization a little bit more. Take a little drink here. On-site on -site or on-page optimization, you want to focus on a strong website and good content and user experience. So there's a use, you have to design your site for user experience and SEO. There, there's, there's such a correlation that happens there. Uh, some of the user experience elements are to have authentic images of your company, right? Authentic images of your brand. The, the, I always say the guy in the yellow hard hat, the smiley white teeth holding a clipboard or holding a hammer is not going to sell your company, right? It does not invoke trust in your company. Um, you want to leverage multimedia to improve on page time. So having videos on your page, having good imagery on your page, having that helps keep the user on the page. And as we spoke about, time on page is a ranking factor. So the longer that that user is engaged with the content on your website, the better, the better you're giving that signal to Google, right? You wanna have, again, pages for each of your services, pages for your cities and neighborhoods that you serve, quality content that's well optimized for every page. Your main keyword needs to be in the title, H1, and then relevant keywords, well, what I was saying, those other kind of sub keywords um, in, in H2 and H3 tags. Nick said he, uh, they need a little bit better content on their site, particularly images and content talking about the services offered, for sure. Um, and and that's, that's a big thing. And we'll, we'll show you that in the live examples here in a little bit. We wanna have meta descriptions that sell the click right? Meta descriptions is that little bit of content below the, 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 your website link uh, in the Google search results. Name, address, and phone number in the footer with schema markup ta uh, tags in the background. So your name, address, and phone number is just this huge indication to Google these days about because Google is very proximity-based in the way that it shows search results especially for local businesses. And your roofing company is a local business. And, and so that, that your name, address, and phone number is an integral part to this. You wanna have a blog with ongoing updates, right? You wanna have activity on your website. That's another part of on-site, on-page uh, uh, SEO is, is you wanna be have, it, your, your website has to be active and, and you continue to add pages to your website as you go along. So we'll go into a couple of live examples here. I'm going to flip over to to one of our uh, one of our clients here, Prominent Construction. Let me just uh, let me just pull this up. So this is a meta description. This is what I was talking about, meta description. So when we type in prominent construction, this is your meta description. Call the number one Minneapolis roofing company. 100, 100 plus five-star reviews, years of experience handling residential and commercial, right? So this, this meta description encourages the click on the website. 
Now, when you get to the website, we want to have it, we're, we're building our websites not only for SEO, but also for the conversion rate opt optimization and the user experience. So you can see here, we're, we, have, we have to be relevant to the times. So we have the, you know, the COVID-19 update on here. Um, up here at the top is what's called a title tag. You can see number one roofers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, prominent construction LLC. There's two parts of that title tag. There is the keyword that we're focusing on, which is roofers, Minneapolis, right? And then there's the branding, prominent construction. So you have to have two parts to it because Google loves a brand. Brands are authoritative. Google loves authority, right? We have all of our elements of conversion rate optimization, our, our phone number in the upper right-hand corner, reviews right here. People are always looking to, to look at reviews. But you can see here, this is what's referred to as an H1 tag. This is the most, an H1 tag or header tag is the most important information that you're providing to Google. It, the, the words that are in the H1 tag, Google will put more relevance on. They will feel that those are, are a stronger, a stronger uh, sense of what you're trying to rank this website for. So it's roofing contractor is, is our keyword in that, in that area. But we don't write roofing contractor. We write the trusted Twin Cities roofing contractor, right? So there's an element of copywriting and SEO. We have the, 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 the drone flyover on there for the multimedia, bringing in the multimedia, bringing in trust factors. It encourages people to scroll down. As you can see, as we're going down here, oh, an elite local roofing company. Those are keywords that we're inserting into the page here in a header tag that, that we would like to rank for. We would like to rank for local roofing company, right? Or just roofing company, Minneapolis roofing company but we don't write it in a way that just says roofing company, roofing companies, roofing contractors, roofers, right? You have to write it in a way that incur that's easy for the user or bringing in the, the authenticity of the brand, right? These are the owners, Justin and Chad. Um, we're speaking to the fears of the consumer. Experience, are you experienced? Are you licensed? You know, do you have, what, what are your warranty? What warranty do you offer? Do you have financing options? Those are fears of the consumer. We bring in a video to, again, leverage that multimedia and create additional time on page. As we're going down the page, we encourage more scrolling. Oh, we can learn more about Prominent as we're going down the page. Let's learn more about this company, right? And then down at the bottom of the page, we have the name, address, and phone number, right? Name, address, and phone number. Remember that. It's an extremely important part of this. So now let's look here. We have pages for roof replacement, roof installation, storm damage, asphalt roofing, siding, insulation, gutters replacement, right? Then over on the commercial side, we have commercial roof installation, commercial roof replacement, commercial roof repair, uh, EPDM, modified bitumen, TPO. So let's look at how we, we go, you have to go into, as, into great detail about the things that you do. So this is a commercial roofing installation page, but we also go into more detail. You can see there's 800, probably 800 words of content on this page. But you can also go into a TPO roofing page. How, much, you know, how many words can you talk about TPO uh, on a page? That's, a, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a smaller topic, right? But we still provide six, 800, a thousand words of content on, uh, on each of these things. And so, you know, under residential, we, you know, if we go under roof replacement, now we have cedar roofing, metal roofing, right? We go into metal roofing, we delve down in, down the silo, what are referred to as silos, uh, even further, right? So there's different types of metal roofing, right? We have standing seam, corrugated, uh, aluminum, copper, steel. Um, you know, so each of those pages, we go down into, into the standing seam metal page. Um, and, uh, and we see, you know, now we have a whole page about standing seam, right? So, so going into great detail about all of these things. And so all of that together, is what helps you rank for all of these different things. 
So you can see here, let me just pull up a couple of uh, this uh, examples of these searches. So th this is, this is uh, you know, searching for roofing companies. We're, we're trying to rank for roofing companies, right? So prominent construction here, scroll down a little bit, prominent construction here, right? Here's that, here's that meta description that I'm talking about that encourages the click. So as you're scrolling here, you see number one roofers in Minneapolis, prominent construction, that encourages the click, right? But now, even if someone types in standing seam metal roof contractors, there's not as many people that search that every month. But if you do standing seam, there are about 70 searches a month for that in, in the Minneapolis area. So, you know, prominent construction here, here's their, their standing seam, their, that specific standing seam metal page. Without that page on their website, they would not be able to rank for that, for that specific keyword phrase, right? Um, Alex says, prominent has built the trust. What other keywords uh, when getting started versus number one roofer in city? Number one roofer is, is kind of just the, that's the sales copy, right? That's the ad copy, essentially. That, that's, the, that, that's part of that in, encouraging the click. Um, um, when getting started, um, I, I mean, we really focus on building out a, a wide breadth of, of those terms. So you can look, um, like this is a newer website that we built. Um, you know, the, this, the initial website build was about 67 pages. Right, so we're really going into detail about this. Prominent probably has, I don't know, a hundred and something pages, right? So let's take a look at, uh, at a couple of the websites that, uh, that people had dropped in earlier, dropped in the chat. Let's, uh, let's take a peek here. We got, uh, we got Kevin, we'll take a look at yours, Altec. All right. It's nice. Got your phone number in the upper right hand corner. Um, quality roofing your home desires. So this is your this is your header one tag. Um, so this is this is where you're going to put more of that that keyword that you're trying to focus on. It looks like you have this page. Your your the title tag in this page. We'll start at the top. Altec Roofing Services. So that's great for the branding. We like to put that in the, at the second part of the title tag. Roof replacement and roof repairs. And then it, as you can see that dot, 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 there's more information there that we can't read. So you wanna keep those clipped down into a, into a very specific uh, set uh, number of characters. Um, but you wouldn't want roof replacement and roof repairs, right? Those are, those are two separate keywords to focus on, right? So you'd want a page for roof replacement and a page for roof repairs that has that title tag. Roof repairs, Altec Roofing Services. Roof replacement, Altec Roofing Services. The higher level keywords in, in roofing, you can see here, let me see if my uh, keyword surfer's open here. So we can look, the higher level keywords for, for roofing is roofers gets the most searches per month. Roofing company next, roofing companies, roofing company, company, uh, companies, roofing co, roofing co roofer, roofer company, roofing contractors, roofers near me, right? So these are those, those big ones, the big keywords. And that's really what you want to focus on, on, on your homepage. Your homepage is for the big keywords. All of the other pages are to build authority which then pushes you up for that main keyword, for those main keywords. So here, there, uh, you know, a nice looking page though, as we're going down the page, you got your get a free estimate, you're bringing in your reviews, you do have your address down, the, down on the page, so that's a good thing. Let's look at your pages real quick. Uh, services, sorry, that went to, looks like you're missing service area pages, so that's something that you could work on. You have new construction, re-roofing, roof repairs, um, on, so you have a lot of these things listed out, right? A lot of these services listed out, but ceramic tile could be its own page, right? Concrete tile, its own page, clay tile, its own page, all nested under tile, you know, tile roofing contract or something like that. Roof maintenance, flat roof, re-roofing, 
So each of these things, you, you, have the, you have the idea here, right? The idea is here. Now it's just to build out on, build on that. If I click here, yep, Premier Club Care, work, photos, videos. So those are some ideas for you there. Uh, hope that helps you out. Um, all right, let me see who else dropped their website in here. We'll, we'll go through a couple of more real quick. We got uh, Gabriel dropped in JMI. Let's take a look at JMI. First thing I notice on the page here, here Gabriel, is, uh, is that it's not secure, right? So this is a big red flag uh, on, the, on Google's side of things. You really have to get your site secured. It's called a SSL or secure socket layer um, that you just have to get that added to your, uh, through your hosting. Um, so again, here, got your COVID response. That's a great timely message. Um, if you is multifamily roofing, renovation and reconstruction. So um, these are three, this is three things, right? So this is your H1 tag, multifamily roofing. If you are a, it looks like that's what you focus on, but you also do renovations, fire water restoration. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Um, that's why you're saying all of that. Um, and you're, you got lots of service areas. So you're going to have a lot, a, a more difficult time getting your website ranked locally based on all of this service area. Um, to have a site with, with multiple service areas, it has to be structured in a very specific way uh, to rank in those local areas. Google is going to display the search results locally. So you're going to have a tough time. Let's look at your title tag. Roofing companies. So not bad with, you got roofing companies in there, but then you want to also add your branding. So JMI contractors. And then here, multifamily roofing, it looks like that's your focus. Uh, that, that's what it looks like to me looking at, at the website. Um, uh, let's see these, the new messages here. A couple of other people drop, drop in, in the chat here. So multifamily roofing and restoration. So, you know, if you only focus on multifamily roofing, Maybe it says multifamily roofing company, multifamily roofing contractor, and that's your main search term. Um, you're you're going to have a tough time with your with your locations unless you have a Google My Business listing in each of the service areas that you follow, and then um, you, they, your your website has to be structured for. Um, so it has to be properly structured for each of those locations. This is a company that we work with that has multiple locations. Um, and so you could see here, if we go into their locations, we go to their Maryland location. Now their URL structure says Maryland here. The title tag says roofing contractor Rockville, Maryland. And then each of the serving service pages, like if we go into roofing here, it's Maryland residential roofing, right? If we change service and then the service, there's also a service area silo that for that very specific, just for Maryland, right? Just for Maryland. But if we go over to their Philadelphia location, now you see here it's Philadelphia PA. We go to their services, it looks, looks very similar, right? But this website is built to rank in Philadelphia, right? Residential roofing, Philadelphia, title tag, residential roofing, Philadelphia. Um, and and so, so to be in multiple locations, it, it, it adds a very, it adds a lot of complexity to your, your SEO. So just wanted to point that out to you. Um, all right, who else dropped? Hope that helps you out. All right, we got a couple more we'll, we'll pop into real quick. And if there's any specific questions, in regards to this as, as we're going through, you know, feel free to, to drop those questions in the chat. Um, Hawaiian built roofing, let's go to Hawaiian built roofing. Hawaiian built roofing, that's what I'm talking about. I wouldn't mind that, especially in the summer months here in, uh, or the winter months here in, uh, in Minneapolis. This is definitely, I like that, uh, you know, you definitely have the look and feel, right, for, for Hawaii, so. That's awesome. Uh, Hawaiian Built Roofing LLC, Shingles, Boise, Idaho. All right, so um, 
Boise, Idaho, I, that, that threw me off a little bit with the Hawaiian, but um, so here you, you, you know, are you, do you want to rank for shingles, right? Are you a roofing supply store, right? If you're not a roofing supply store, you don't want to rank for shingles. You're going to, you don't want phone calls for shingles. You want somebody calling you for a roof replacement, roof repair. So roof installations and repairs is your header tag. I would, it's not a bad one, but maybe, uh, may, maybe, you know, expand the copy on that a little bit. The bet, you know, the, the top roofing installation and repair company in Boise, right? Something like that to make it a little bit more, more congruent with that. Um, lots of breakdown in the pages here. So you got definitely a few things, low slope metal roof alternatives. Let's take a peek, uh, see our work. So you're, you're encouraging people to scroll a little bit. Let's see if you got, you don't have your, uh, name, address, and phone number in the footer. So you want to get that on there. Do, do, do commercial. Let's take a peek here. Commercial roof and construction. Not too bad. Not too bad. Definitely have, you probably have about 400 words of content on that page. You want to get that up above the 500 word uh, area. You can see here, you're saying we install roofs in this area, but you don't have service area pages for those, right? You are specialists in these types of roofing projects. You could have a page for each of those types of things. Uh, each of these things, metal, slate, tile, all of those can be, can be great additions to the content on your website. Commercial roofing construction. Um, I don't know if construction would be the right term uh, to use in that header tag, I'd rather see you use commercial roofing contractor, commercial roofing company. That's a higher searched term. Um, so that's, uh, that's another one. Then we got, uh, hope that helps you out a little bit. And I know we're, I don't want to get too far on time here, but I want to help you guys out as much as possible. So this residential roofers.com, this is kind of a, this looks like a kind of a template site. Um, so got your, got your uh, phone number in the, or uh, name, address, and phone number in the, in the footer. The, your Northern Virginia roofing experts. So not too bad roofing experts as the, as the header one tag. Residential roofers, high quality roof, uh, residential roofing services. Instead of the high quality residential roofing services, I would maybe say residential roofers residentialroofers.com. The branding, you're going to have a branding issue on Google. It's very difficult for, it will be very difficult for Google to di differentiate uh, a, a search phrase from a brand. So, you know, back in the day, you know, having a, an, what we refer to as an exact mat match keyword, residential roofers, um, may have been a, a huge advantage, but nowadays they love, Google loves the brand. And residential roofers being put all over the internet through all of your citations and link building and things like that, residential roofers may start to look spammy to Google. So you may have some, you, you might have to work a little bit harder and be very cognizant of your, of your anchor text and things like that as you're going forward with that. So, um, all right. Uh, David asked, where's the best place to get backlinks for the industry? We'll go into that in a little bit, David. Uh, so the keywords and tags, Donna is asking, the keywords and tags are, base, are base, basically our page tags lines up and what gets pulled up through Google exactly. So this one is, this is uh, what Donna's working on here. <clears throat> So good, Name, uh, phone number in the upper right hand corner. Let's take Roofing Company, Phoenix, Arizona. So that's good, American Roofing Waterproofing. So Roofing Company, location, and the branding. You got the keyword, location, and branding. The thing I see incorrect here is the 24 seven emergency services. This, this is a, a good place. You may wanna put like 24 seven emergency services like uh, like maybe you would put something like a, <clears throat> uh, your trusted Phoenix, Arizona roofing contractor in here. And then underneath that, outside of the title tag, just in text, that's not as important to Google, 24-7 emergency services. So you can have that still be a, 
uh, you know, part of your offer in that area, but it's not giving Google the, 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 it's not, Google's not counting that keyword emergency services as high as it is the other ones. Um, this to me looks a little bit like a stock photo. Uh, if it, it could, it might be someone on your team, Donna, I'm not sure, but to me, it looks like a stock photo. It doesn't have as much authenticity in that. Uh, how can we protect your property? Again, again, we got, we know what we're doing, right? We know how to categorize roofing. All of you know this, they, you understand this by looking at these websites, but it's having pages, pages for each of those. I like how you're bringing in the, the reviews there. That's great. Uh, got your address in the footer. That's good. So, so some great, you know, everyone, you know, there's always room for improvement on some of these things. I uh, hope that helps. <clears throat> All right. Oh, Thrive. You had Thrive do your website. Yep. I have heard of Thrive and, uh, and I have not seen, I have seen very few Thrive websites rank. So I apologize. I, I'm sorry that you have had to have that experience with Thrive. They're more of a software company that, that pretends to be a digital marketing company, in my humble opinion. <laughs> so uh, give us a call. We'll, we'll, we'll show you the, the right way to do things. Um, all right. So we're getting close to an hour here. So I really want to jump back to the slides. Let me just close this out. We should, we should get back to the slides here. All right. Get back to the slides. Great, Donna. We'll, uh, Drop a chat to Nikki see, and schedule a call with her and, and have a conversation. We'll, we'll help, you, help you find the right solution. Um, so again, live example, you know, this is prominent construction. You know, so far this year, you know, about 75% of their, of their calls are coming from organic right now, right? Here's another example of a company we work with out in Omaha, Solfell Construction Roofing, you know, ranking number one for it, the, 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 the goal is to rank for a lot of things, right? A lot of things um, because you don't know how people are searching, right? There's a, a great number of searches that get typed into Google every day that have never been typed into Google before. So Google has to figure out what to put there. Um, so uh, again, that, that's, you know, you really wide depth, breadth of things. This is, uh, this is Solfeld construction roofing. So again, you know, it was 79% of their calls came from organic, right? So off-page SEO, this is speaking to David's question. So claiming and optimizing your Google My Business listing, regularly responding to reviews, getting lots of high quality uh, business, uh, uh, business citations across the web to build your brand. Those are uh, things like um, uh, uh, Yelp, Yellow Pages, Facebook, uh, City Pages. There, there's tons of these places all around the web. Building authoritative and relevant links back to your website. So the, the top three secrets for Google Maps listings, and this is where your links to your website come from in a, in a way also. Um, and that's through all of these citations that get built out. That's where, your, that, that's where your name, address, and phone number needs to be exactly in the same order. And we go into more detail about this in our Google Maps uh, webinar that'll be coming up in the next couple of months. Um, but having those as links is, is the foundation of, of all local. And so, you know, having yourself on Angie's List and Home Advisor and Dex Knows and Yellowbot and all these different places, Facebook, Twitter, those are all relevant links. But then on top of that, getting links from your local chamber of commerce is very important. You know, that's a very authoritative, um, that's a very authoritative link. If you're a member of the NRCA, right, you get a link. If you're on Owens Corning uh, Platinum Preferred, you're on Owens Corning website with a link back to your website. GAF, you know, if you're GAF Master Elite, you get a link from GAF. Those are very authoritative links because Google knows that GAF by through their brand, right? Through their branding, that they are one of, that they're the largest roofing, you know, manufacturer in what is it, North America? Um, you know, that's a huge authoritative signal to have your company link, linked from GAF 
to your website. Facebook, uh, Pinterest, local, local businesses, uh, if you're supporting local charities, getting your content distributed on local uh, news stations and things like that, all of those can create, um, can create those relevant links. Um, one of the, how do you, here, here's an example. How do you find these relevant links, right? What we, what we want to look at is what the results on the, the, what do the websites have in common that we're looking at that are already ranking? So you can see here uh, that this is a, a one, you know, we have a Minneapolis Home and Remodeling Show is a link, Better Business Bureau, Owens Corning, NRCA, uh, bird eye, guild quality, those are all links coming to prominence website. But when we look at, at a website, what we're looking at, what we want to look at is you want to look at the competitors in your area and you look, you get to, you look at their backlink profile through tools like Hrefs, SEMrush, uh, SEO Surfer, things like this. It'll tell you what backlinks your competitors have. And if they have a specific set of backlinks that you can go and obtain. You know, if you're, you know, hey, they have a link from Owens Corning and, and we're Owens Corning, so let's go and, you know, get listed on Owens Corning's website. They have a link from the Better Business Bureau. Let's get accredited by the Better Business Bureau. They're a member of the local Chamber of Commerce and they get a link from there. We can go and get a, go and become a member of the local Chamber of Commerce. So it's, what we do in, in SEO these days is we're really looking at, the websites that Google is already ranking and finding things that we can, that we can model on our website. So claimed and verified listings, the companies here that are listed here have all have claimed and verified Google maps listings. They have a lot of online reviews, right? Um, they're, they have the right keywords in the title tag, roofing twin cities, roofing Minneapolis, you know, roofing contractor, you know, St. Paul, right? Or some, you know, the some variations of that. They have lots of citations. Like what I mentioned, their, 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 their name, address, and phone number is all over the internet in all of these, all of these high-level directories. They have a solid link profile across the web. So they're getting links from all of the right places. Um, so the new SEO formula kind of to, to, to bring it back around is to set up a great website with pages for each of your services in each of the cities that you serve. Get your keyword and geographic modifier in the title, in the title and headers of every page. Use quality, well-written content, unique content for every page. Leverage multimedia to keep that time on page, right? And increase the user experience. You want to get online reviews all over the web, build your citations consistently, post updated relevant blog content to have activity on your website, and then build links to build authority to your website. So that's, that, that's kind of the gist of it. If anyone wants to drop another question in chat, I know we're, we're, we're kind of at that hour mark now, so I, I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time today. I know it's Friday before Memorial Day weekend. But if, you know, if you would like to learn more about what we do in, the, in regards to this, you know, uh, you can visit our website, roofermarketers.com. We'll, we'll do a free review of your website. We'll do an audit for you. You could also uh, uh, message Nikki directly in chat and say, hey, I want to set up a time to talk. You could call us at 855-799-1252. What we'll do for you is we'll, we'll do an analysis of your current online visibility We'll look at the keywords that you're ranking for, not ranking for. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of look at how your citations are built out, how, how your backlink, what your backlink profile, profile looks like, analyze your social presence, your, your website conversion rate effectiveness, all of these things. And then, you know, kind of show you what you can do better. We don't do sales pitches here. The worst case scenario is that it's a learning experience for you. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't put any pressure on any of that. So, our goal here is uh, the mission of Roofer Marketers is to help roofing contractors generate more sales through their digital marketing efforts. And we do that in two ways. We do that, you know, kind of doing the work for you in our agency. And then we do that through our education side, which is our book and these webinars and things like that. So I really hope 
I really hope that, that, that you guys can, uh, you know, got some good value out of this today. If anyone has any more questions, feel free to, to reach out. Um, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, you know, join our, uh, join our Facebook group, Roofer Marketers Master, or Roofing Marketing Mastermind. Um, follow, check out the podcast on all streaming platforms. Uh, check out the podcast, Roofing Success Podcast. Uh, uh, follow, you know, check out our YouTube channel for all of the previously recorded webinars. If you want to kind of go back and update some things like that, follow us on Instagram, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, anything else I can help you with, drop a question in the chat. And I'd be happy to, to take some more time with you. If, if I don't see any more questions coming through, I hope everyone has a great Memorial Day weekend. I hope that, uh, that your families are, are safe and healthy through this COVID crisis. And, um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk soon. So 